Okay, so for just some historical background, you can, you can get it going there. Uh, Jezebel, Queen Jezebel, was a Phoenician princess. Okay, good. Who married Ahab, king of Israel. And I'm sure a lot of you know about this, but in case you don't, that's why I'm reviewing this. Uh, her father was Ethbaal, king and high priest of the Sidonians, and Jezebel introduced Baal worship into Israel. And just so that you know, one of the, the definitions of her name means without cohabitation. She hated intimacy. She hated anything, oneness, unity. And that's what, that, you know, that's what God is all about. He wants us to be one with him and intimate with him. The pillars of Baal worship include child sacrifice. We can think about abortion in today's day and age. Sexual immorality. All the craziness with the trans, transgender and the, the sexual confusion that's out there, right? Pantheism, which is reverence of creation over creator. Uh, and adults would gather around this Baal altar and would burn infants alive as a sacrificial offering to Baal. I mean, you just Google this stuff and look it up. They would engage in orgies. The ritual was intended to produce economic prosperity by prompting Baal to bring rain for the fertility of Mother Earth. It's so twisted. You know, so Baal worship, when you, when you look up Baal worship, and, and Baal is really over, the spirit of Baal is over Jezebel. And Baal worship is, is throughout the world, really. And um, Baal means lord or, or possessor, sun god of Phoenicia, or, and supreme deity among the Canaanites. And so you need to understand what the Canaanites are about. Canaanites were Baal worshipers. They participated in sexual worship of, you know, it's just really perverse, the fertility rights, prostitution, and human sacrifice, all to pacify the gods. And it's a murdering spirit, just Jezebel. It, it, it's, 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 it's a goal is to kill spiritual leaders. Well, let me just say this. This, like what we just read even about the Canaanite spirit or Canaanites, it's a counterfeit affection. So when you look at today, it's no different. There's nothing new under the sun. And so um, it's, it's looking to pacify something. It's looking to think that we're going to get healed or there's going to be restoration. Pornography is another thing, you know, that you think of uh, with uh, instant gratification. There was all this perversion that was going on. And so this spirit um, just really, uh, you know, we're going to really get into the effects of it and characteristics of it. But this spirit hates the prophetic. It hates the supernatural, it hates the, the idea of awakening and revival, anything where we're flowing with the spirit of the Lord, okay? And Ahab was her husband in the scripture, and Ahab's the only spirit that tolerated Jezebel. Why? Because it deferred to her. It allowed this thing to take over. And the effects of this demon is to flood our lives and, and leadership and people with weakness and fear, to basically bow, to cower, to be intimidated, and to have more of a fear of man than a fear of the Lord. And we see that. There's so much carnality. There's so much weak um, uh, Christianity out there. And um, so, but I do want to say this. Even in these last days, Je this Jezebel spirit is still defeated. The Holy Spirit is ready to anoint each and every one of us in a greater way to overthrow all the works of the enemy. I mean, the enemy is the enemy, and his goal is to kill, steal, and destroy, right? But Jesus says, what? I came to give you that life more abundantly. And always remember, we're not a defeated people. We're not warring from defeat. We're warring from a victorious place because Jesus took the keys away from the enemy, but the only way he can get in is through deception and lying and, you know, so forth. But, you know, the, his goal is to get people to believe that this is nonsense and why are we teaching this in the church? <laughs> That's his goal. You know, he's a, he's the father, the Bible says he's the father of lies. You know, I've had people, I've had Christians say to me, you know, I don't know about this stuff. Well, you just need to read the Bible and start studying it and you'll start learning about it. So, you know, God wants us to understand that we are consecrated believers and devoted people. And he will give us the grace and the power to overthrow and displace every spirit. And he doesn't want us to, to think that we're these weak little you know, pathetic people that don't know what we're doing and he's greater? Absolutely not. But remember that God's got a plan. He always has a plan. He knows the end from the beginning. 
So we see here in 1 Kings 16.30 in the New Living Translation, it says, Ahab, son of Omri, did what was evil in the Lord's sight, even more than any of the kings before him. He was, he was brutal, but he deferred to Jezebel. He, he allowed her to influence him and the nation of Israel to worship false deities, to worship uh, Baal, all right? And she used seduction to get what she wanted and to kill. Just watch TV. There is just so much witchcraft, and because Jezebel works with witchcraft, there's so much seduction and trash. And listen, let me tell you something. It's in the church. So, um, and just remember, this spirit, just because Jezebel is a woman, doesn't mean this spirit only operates through a woman. It's, it's non-gender. Spirits are non-gender. <laughs> They'll pick whoever, whosoever they can get a hold of. And so... Um, and so listen to what it says in Revelations 2, 19 through 22 in the Passion. It says here, Know all that you've done for me, your love and faith, your ministry and steadfast perseverance. In fact, you now excel in these virtues even more than at the first. But I have this against you. You are forgiving that woman Jezebel who calls herself a prophetess and is seducing my loving servants. She is teaching that it is permissible to indulge in sexual immorality and to eat food sacrificed to idols. I have waited for her to repent from her vile immorality, but she willingly refuses to do so. Now I will lay her low with terrible distress along with all her adulterous partners if they do not repent. Now let me just say this. In another version it says, you know, I have this against you for you have tolerated that woman Jezebel. You've tolerated Jezebel in the church. You've tolerated in the business. It's not just in the church. It's in the, Lord Jesus, in our government. You know, this spirit undermines. This spirit is, is just, it wants to intimidate and it wants to cause fear. And so um, it, it wants us to be lukewarm and, and be more concerned about offending people than about a fear of the Lord. And that, that's a game, the enemy's game plan. So in 1 Kings 18, 4, see, her desire, this spirit hates the prophetic, hates the prophets. Why? Because when you have a prophet, when you're, when you're prophesying, you're foretelling. The enemy doesn't want us to know ahead of him. He doesn't know everything. And so he hates that. And so in 1 Kings 18.4, it says, When Jezebel cut off the prophets of the Lord, Obadiah, who was one of the minor prophets, took a hundred prophets and hid them by fifties in a cave and fed them with bread and water. He hid them because she was out to take them out. That spirit wants to take out the spirit of, uh, of Elisha. The, the, it represents the prophetic movement in the church. wants to take it out. And it hates the prophetic. It hates the prophets. It wants this spirit even. It's like in our walk. Because, you know, we all have the DNA of Jesus Christ within us. So we all have, we all hear his voice. We all have that prophetic mantle, that prophetic anointing. We're not all called to be prophets, but we all have that prophetic unction within us. And so what is it? How, you know, I don't know about you. It, it, like there have been times like you're doing good, you're praying, you're doing great. And then the next day you want to withdraw and hide in the cave. And you have this thing of rejection. You're feeling really rejected. You feel low. You feel despondent, you, you know, discouraged. Am I the only one that's ever happened to? It's like, oh, my God. You know, you want to throw yourself off the roof. Like, what are you talking about? Like, God, where are you? Right? And so that's what happens. Now, it doesn't necessarily mean it's in you. I, it, there's just an assignment. There's an attack. But so then we rise up after, like, after a while, I'm like, oh, God, what is going on? Why is this happening? And then why do you take so long? Then we pick it out on God, you know? But we have to then take authority over the enemies. I bind this spirit right now in Jesus' name. I don't care if it's Jezebel, Python, whatever it is. Just bind that spirit in Jesus' name. Take authority over it. We have that right. And so it hates the prophetic, so it wants you to isolate. It wants you to withdraw. It wants you to get into fear, all right? And it's this thing likes to send waves of depression. Look at what happened to Elisha after he fought Jezebel, right? And so the spirit, like I said to you before, it, it just doesn't want us to flow in the God-given call that God has for us, all right? So Jezebel wants us to worship false gods. What would be a false god in our life? Money, right? Oh, Lord's giving me a word about mammon. He, he wants us to worship mammon. 
He wants us to worship, you know, any counterfeit affection that we can think of that where we would put that before Jesus, that before our time with him, you know, that before us going to him and really seeking help that we would get deliverance or healing or, you know, just downloads from the Lord, right? And so um, we see here, like in 2 Kings 9.22, I, I guess I shouldn't quote this here, but I am. In, in, the, in the message, it says, when Jorham saw Jehu, he called out, good day, Jehu. And Jehu answered, see, the Lord's going to, when we end today, we're going to release a, a Jehu warring anointing on all of us. And, and so Jehu said, well, what's good about it? How can there be anything good about it as long as, you're, as long as the promiscuous whoring and sorceries of your mother Jezebel pollutes the country? See, these people, let me tell you something. They weren't politically correct, okay? They just told you where it was at. That's, we have to be a little more like this. I mean, not so much, you know, so rude, but, but we need to be, speak the truth in love, amen? And so... She want, this, this thing wanted to control, but Jezebel called it out. I mean, uh, Jehu called it out. So this is what you're doing. And let me tell you, you know, there's a lot of seduction in the church. There's a lot of sexual sin in the church. There's a lot of leaders that, that sleep with their parishioners. That's just truth. That's called sin, okay? That is not okay, and so, but, I mean, you know, uh, listen, where you think that's okay because the leader says this is what you need to do, read your Bible. The Bible says flee fornication. And that's control, that's manipulation, and that's a disgrace. And you know what? God is not mocked. And the, everything that's hidden, there's a scripture, you know, in, in the New Testament, and there's, it's in two places, it says everything that's hidden will be uncovered and revealed. Amen. It will all get exposed, just like what's happening in the government. The Durham report and everything else is going on. Everything hidden will be uncovered and exposed. God is exposing the corruption. God is exposing the sin. And see, there's a Jezebel spirit that's been operating out there, especially in the state house, in the government. And we, as we are praying, we have to take authority over the spirit. Now, remember, God loves the people. God always wants the people to repent and be restored. So the, the people are not the enemy. The enemy is, the devil is, and we have to be careful that we don't, you know, disdain or have, a, you know, that attitude towards somebody or look down upon anybody. But listen, it's polluting our country. So, in, 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 so she's a murdering spirit, and there's revenge. So in 1 Kings 19.2, in the message, it says here, Ahab reported to Jezebel everything that Elijah had done, just like a little baby including the massacre of the prophets. Jezebel immediately sent a messenger to Elisha with her threat. The gods will get you for this, and I'll get even with you. And by this time tomorrow, you'll be as dead as one of these prophets. Now, Elisha just um, had this incredible victory with all the destruction of, uh, uh, you know, the prophets of Baal. And, and he said, how long will you falter between two opinions? And, you know, if God be God, you know, and, and, and we'll see who's God. And, and he repaired his altar of intimacy and he called the prophets over and the prophets of Baal were destroyed, right? And I read a lot of commentaries on this because I said, Lord, it doesn't make sense that here he is challenging these prophets. I mean, challenging these demonic entities, really, and going up to them and not backing down. Now, all of a sudden, he's going to run and hide. And so I said, Lord, that just doesn't make sense to me. And, you know, when that spirit, like after you've had a victory and after you've really warred, that thing can come on you. I mean, like what we said earlier, a lot of times you feel so despondent at times and just like, oh, my God. And that's why we need each other to pray for each other, right? However, a lot of the commentaries, I thought this could be, they, what they said was that they felt that when they were looking up the original Hebrew, what, it, what some of the wording was mistranslated here. And they were saying that he was very discouraged because he didn't see a lot of change the way he wanted to see in, in the nation there. And, and, I mean, don't we feel like that at times? We're praying, we're praying, we're praying, we're praying. It's like, you know, we see change, but not to the extreme that we want it. And, and so 
you know, they said that, that he, he, he took off and ran, but it wasn't out of fear. It was more out of discouragement by just going by what he was seeing, but that spirit was attacking him, all right? I thought, okay, I'll go with that. But, you know, um, so, you know, that, that's the way this thing attacks us. It tries to just get us emotionally down and let us believe the lie that we're not effective, and we are. Our prayers are making a difference. Our position, our, our stance, our, our um, purity before the Lord, us honoring the Lord, it's, it's making a difference, okay? And um, someone once, there was a quote. I mean, I kind of said it earlier, but this is a quote, and I forgot, I didn't put the guy's name down. Someone once said, and I wrote here, someone once said that Satan's greatest deception is convincing the world that he does not exist. When you travel overseas, when you're in Africa, you're in Brazil, you know, you're in these different countries, they all believe that they know the devil exists because they have so much of the demonic, so much of the supernatural. But here in America, we have to intellectualize everything. The devil is real and alive, let me tell you. But greater is he that's in all of us and he that's in the world. And we have to understand and know that, wait a minute, back down. We're not going to tolerate this. He says, don't tolerate Jezebel. We saying, don't tolerate any demon. I'm not tolerating. Like we say all the time in counseling, we don't counsel demons. We cast them out. We, we will counsel you, but not the demon, okay? So anyway, and believe me, we've cast a lot of demons out through all these years. So I wanted to give you an example in the New Testament of Jezebel in operation. So in Matthew 14, 6 through 12, when, Herod, when Herod's birthday came, the daughter of Herodias danced in the mist before the company and pleased and fascinated Herod. And so he promised with an oath to give her whatever she might ask. And she being put forward and prompted by her mother said, give me the head of John the Baptist right here on the platter. And the king was distressed and sorry, but because of the oath and his guests, he ordered it to be given to her. He sent and had John beheaded in prison. And his head was brought in on a platter and given to the little maid. And she brought it to her mother. And John's disciples came and took up the body and buried it. And they went and told Jesus. Now, let me tell you, that was a demon. That woman was possessed by a demon. And that spirit wants to cut the head off of leaders. Smite the shepherd, and there go the sheep, right? He wants to cut the head off of, and, 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 you know, of any leader, really, especially in the home. You, you see that in how in many of the TV shows, I, I don't know, I mean, we haven't watched TV shows in, in a long time, but in the TV shows, what do they do? They make the men look like idiots, right? They're, they, they, uh, it's disgraceful that, that the men don't have a brain and the women are ruling and controlling. That's wrong. And so this, it's a Jezebel spirit. It wants to, um, there's, it's just an immoral spirit and it loves to lure and seduce its victims. All right? So, and when I say seduce, it's not just sexual. It's with drugs. It's with pornography. It's with anything that's contrary to the word of God. It wants you to worship anything but Jesus Christ. Because in essence, you're worshiping it, that spirit, all right? So it loves to intimidate the prophets. And uh, as I said before, I want you to withdraw. And then let me tell you something. This spirit's very religious and doesn't want to submit to any leadership in any way. You know, we have dealt with it through the years. Thank God, not a whole lot. But I learned my lesson. Because one of the things with Jezebel is you have to confront it. And a lot of times, well, the, the thing that's so deceptive about it a lot of times they say the right thing, they're religious, they're worshiping, they love Jesus, but all the red flags, the bells, everything's going off in you. Like, and then you think it's you. Like, oh my gosh, what is my problem? I'm so suspicious, and we'll talk about that in a minute, but I'm so suspicious and judgmental. Meanwhile, this person is wreaking havoc, and his goal is to bring dissension and division. It comes against leadership. It talks all nicey-nice to you, but then behind your back, talks real good about you. And then if you, if you go to confront it, it literally flips out. Believe me, I had my experience with this. I said, never again, Jesus. Never again. So one of the tactics, it, it's witchcraft. It, it's, it's charismatic. You can call it charismatic witchcraft, okay? 
And so in 1 Samuel 15, 23 in the Amplified, it says, For rebellion is as the sin of witchcraft, and stubbornness is as idolatry, and a terrapin household good luck images. Because you have rejected the word of the Lord, he also has rejected you from being king. He was talking about King Saul. But rebellion is as the sin of witchcraft. This spirit operates with rebellion and witchcraft, okay, and disobedience. It's stubborn. It's stubbornness is as idolatry, okay? And um, so rebellion is opposition to one in authority. Witchcraft is self-focused, self-promoting, it's self-pleasing. I'm, when I'm saying witchcraft here, I don't necessarily mean that, you, you know, you have your cauldron and, you know, you have your Satan's covens. I mean, that's one aspect of it. But witchcraft, when here I'm referring to its manipulation, control, and dominance, okay? We're trying to control in a very unhealthy way. All right. Jesus doesn't control like that. He gives us a free choice. So what are some of the characteristics of a Jezebel? Um, and, and, and here's the thing. We have to ask the Lord to please help us to discern the spirit. Just because someone has a strong personality and can be a little strong at certain times, that doesn't mean they're Jezebel, okay? So we have to just be careful with this. But a Jez what are some of the characteristics? The spirit causes division. Did I put that up? Oh, good. Within churches, families, and communities. It hates marriage. This spirit hates families and marriage. Remember what I said, that the name means, one of the names, definition, is without cohabitation. Doesn't want that unity, doesn't want that oneness, doesn't want that, that always comes and tries to develop and cause a wedge between families, all right? And listen, not just Jezebel, but this particular family, this spirit focuses on that. It reduces men to nothing. You know, that Ahab spirit, you know, it followed her around. Whatever you say, whatever, you know, men and women defer one to another, honor and respect each other. It, this was, um, you know, he, he totally um, abdicated his role and gave it over to her. You see, we both need each other. We both need to honor and respect each other, okay? So uh, it takes, uh, I wrote here, it takes away authority. Um, it takes, it tries to take away the authority men and women of God have. It draws you into false flattery and deceit. It robs men and women from their identities. And this causes others to question themselves. It's always challenging that. The spirit will attach itself to someone who seeks to be the center of attention and self-serving. It's under the, the in, its influence. It's, it's, wants, it's seeking self-glory. This spirit, let me tell you, is combative and critical. You challenge it, oof. It will undermine change in any sort of constructive criticism and will go after anyone who crosses its path. And the goal is to destroy leaders, ministries, and our nation, ultimately. And we've seen examples of that on TV with our government. I won't say the name, but it was a female. And uh, so we have illegitimate authority, right? It attacks ministers, plants seeds of discord. They have their own agenda. They heard from God. They know more than you do. They know more than Jesus. And, and most often, they will say, you know, they basically just want you to agree with them, but they know, you know, like if you want to pray about something or if you say, well, let, let us pray and see what the Spirit of the Lord says. And they'll say, no, God already told me. They're not teachable. All right? Seeks position of authority is always rebellious and rebels when it's corrected. False humility will act sorrowful but never own their own stuff. Okay? And that's why we have to be strong in the Lord. All right? So, um, let me see, I don't know what else I had up there. Uh, but anyway, so you get it. It's very deceptive, manipulative, causes discouragement. Oh, I did put that up there. Uh, fear, control, pride and independence, sexual immorality, sed very sedu seducing, seducing, very seduction, sedu seducing. <laughs> Hello. And very religious, okay? And I really want to emphasize the sexual immorality in the seducing spirit because we're going to really have to, like, really pray but also understand what people are operating. They're under an influence. It's like the spirit has blinded people's eyes and, and that we bind this spirit that is seducing them. It's a spirit of it. So let me just say this. You have a spirit of Baal, you have Jezebel, and you have Antichrist. All right, the spirit of Antichrist is against Christ, right? And there's deception there. And so when I'm praying, I bind that spirit that's influencing our school system. We bind that spirit that's influencing our government. Um, 
and uh, it, it's there to bring destruction. It's con anything. It's so contrary to the word of God. Listen, even us, uh, you know, praying. Um, I had an opportunity. I didn't even get a chance to talk to my husband, but one of our elders um, ha is, is able to come, and uh, they teach on training parents how to deal with the school systems. Right now, um, we have school, you know, we have teachers here, and that uh, not everyone has to, or I guess you don't follow suit with whatever they're requiring you to do, but they're, you know, with teaching these kids um, about transgender, we have uh, one of the, in one of the school systems here, the teacher just told us that now the boys are able to go to the girls' bathroom and vice versa, and the girls are crying because they're afraid they don't want the boys in there. If I was a parent, I'd be flipping out over there. But we, but we can all do so. We're taxpayers, right? Like, what are we supposed to do? Just say, well, wow, it's too bad. No, we have to do something about this. So anyway, we wanna, I want to bring her in. And I know Peter would be all for it, but I didn't get a chance to talk to him about it. But we want to bring her in and have her teach, Carolyn. And, okay, amen, brother. And have her teach on how to, be, to use wisdom and to be strategic in addressing school systems, not just be a squeaky wheel, right? So I'm, I'm, I really am all for it, and I want her to do that. But see, this spirit just wants to take over. And, and, of course, it wants to cause that division that, and to cause this unity, all right? So I'm going to tell you something. But every time the spirit of Jezebel rises up, the Lord is raising up an Elisha spirit in all of us. And so we, you know, God is, you know, the enemy just overplays his hand all the time. And so as his son and daughter, as we all are here, God has given us the power and authority to overthrow the spirit. Okay, or really anything that we're addressing. So in these end times, I, it felt like this is what the Lord said to me. He said, the end time spirit will stir up and expose both the passivity of Ahab, because that to me that equals um, the fear of man in the church, carnality in the church. And of course, it can be in your place of business, but I'm focusing on the church right now, okay? And the control of witchcraft and Jezebel. This spirit, the spirit of Elisha, this end time ministry of what God is calling us to operate is to expose this, where we are not going to allow weak leaders lead us. We have to pray about that. I won't mention names right now, but there are some weak leaders in our government. And so what are some of the entry points? Well, I mean, it's like with any spirit, any kind of unresolved emotional pain where you have anger, bitterness, resentment, a a a abandonment, um, any kind of sin will open up the door, right? Any kind of dysfunctional families, it could be, listen, a lot of times people start to get like this is because of abuse that took place in their life as a means to control themselves, I mean, to protect themselves. That, and so, you know, I'm, I'm not putting people down. If, if someone's operating that or you know people, Jesus came to set the captives free. We don't have to say that way. But it's also in a system, all right? So our prayers, when we're strategic and hitting it, you know, the bullseye with not just buck shooting, but we're, we're binding that spirit. We're not, you know, tearing down territorial spirits, but we're taking authority over the spirit that's in operation and loosing the spirit of truth. We can pray that way, okay? And so, um, anyway, so... We're, we're going to pray in a minute, but I'm still not done yet, because I want to talk a little bit about Jehu here. And so, so in 1 Kings 19, 15 through 17 in the Amplified, I don't remember if I gave you that one, but um, the Lord, this is about how the Lord raised up. After Elisha took off, the, the game plan was still to take out uh, Jezebel, okay? So in 1 Kings 19, 15 through 17, it says, The Lord said to him, who? Elijah. Go return on your way to the wilderness of Damascus, and when you arrive, you shall anoint Haziel as king over Aram, and you shall anoint Jehu, the son of Nimshi, as king over Israel, and you will anoint Elisha, the son of Shaphat, <laughs> I'm not even going to try the other one, as prophet in your place. It will come about that Jehu will put to death whoever escapes from the sword of Haziel, and Elisha shall put to death whoever escapes the sword of Jehu. So God had a game plan to take her out, take that spirit out, all right? And so what I thought was really interesting 
is he anointed two kings. So you had the kingly anointing and you have the, the prophet there. And, and we're all in Revelations 1. It says that we are kings and priests. We have that kingly anointing. And we have the prophetic. We have the prophets, all right? And so um, Elijah didn't take her out, but the next generation did. And so I was just looking at it. So it wasn't just Elijah, but he, he called, uh, the Lord had set him up where, you know, the others, the other generation, the other people were able to work together. And so I just, I, you know, I just thought that was pretty interesting. And so there was that anointing of Jehu. And now Jehu's name means Yahweh is God. And one of the things about him, he discerned the spirit. He discerned that her roots were witchcraft and idolatry, that she was wreaking havoc in Israel, causing people, encouraging them to, to, to worship other gods, encouraging them to, to, be, you know, to live a, a lifestyle of seduction and immorality. That's what that spirit does. Oh, don't be so fanatical. Oh, that's ridiculous. You know, come on. I mean, you're such a, a fanatical Christian. Well, there's only one way to be if you want results. You have to be all in, sold out for Jesus. You know, when you're lukewarm, when you live a life straddling the fence, you don't get much results, I can assure you. And uh, so in 2 Kings 9, 7 through 10 in the Amplified, it says, You will strike the house of Ahab, your master, so that I may avenge the blood of my servants, the, pros uh, the prophets, and the blood of all the servants of the Lord who have died at the hands of Jezebel. God will avenge the enemy. God will avenge everything that's taken place in America. Now, again, remember, he loves people, all right? So this is Old Testament here, but he loves people, and he wants people restored and healed. But it says, for the entire house of Ahab shall perish, and I will cut off Ahab from every male, both bond and free in Israel. And I will make the house of Ahab like a house of Jeroboam, the son of Nabat, and like the house of Basha, the son of whatever. And the dogs will eat Jezebel in his te territory of Jezreel, and there will be no one to bury her. Then he opened the door and fled. Wow. Wow. <laughs> Like Jezebel, you're going to be taken out. In you know, Deuteronomy chapter 7, it says that we are to have no mercy on the enemy. Amen. No mercy. And, and I'm not talking about no mercy on people. On the enemy, on sin, on its destruction, on depression, on hopelessness, on despair, on poverty. Have no mercy on the enemy. I'm not tolerating you. That's not my portion. Jesus died on the cross for victory. And if that's what he said, which it is, then how do I get there? Amen? And so um, in 2 Kings 9, 32 through 37, it says, uh, Then Jehu raised his face towards the window and said, Who's on my side? Who? And two or three of the officials looked down at him, and he said, Throw her down. So they threw her down, and some of her blood spattered on the wall. I know this is gross. And on the horses, and he trampled her underfoot. And when he came in, he ate and drank and said, See now to this cursed woman and bury her, for she is the king's daughter. And they went and buried her, but they found nothing left except the skull and the feet and the palms of her hand. So they returned and told Jehu, and he said, This is the word of the Lord, which was spoken through the servant Elisha. And in the property of Jezreel, the dogs shall eat the flesh of Jezebel, and the corpse of Jezebel will be like... Like dung on the surface of the field in the property of Jezreel so they can't say this is Jezebel let me tell you something God hates his spirit and and Je, Je, uh, Jehu had no mercy you saw he says he called it out and we're gonna deal with this thing because it what it does is it seduces you and it wants to flatter you and I'm so sorry oh I, listen I don't mean to do that and that. no 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 this thing needs to get cast out of an individual but also we have to recognize that Whenever it's contrary, whatever's going on, especially, again, it's in our nation. That's why I'm referring to that. What's in our nation, there's a Jezebel spirit that works with witchcraft and the Antichrist spirit and Baal that is in operation, okay? And that's how we war. We take authority over that thing. And so Jehu confronted her without fear because he knows his authority. And as Christians, we must know our authority, right? So, again, even here as I'm talking to you, I keep hearing... These people aren't believing this. Maybe it's on, the people online aren't believing this, you know. But I'm going to tell you something. This is legit. You know, Jehu operated, and he had a fierce warrior anointing. Remember, that's the enemy's goal. He doesn't want to be found out. But he's afraid of people who know their God. And in Daniel, it says, those who know their God shall do great exploits. 
It's for all of us to do, not just a certain group of people. I do believe with all my heart that we're coming into a time when, you know, I mean, God is calling us into this, you know, I've been saying this forever, deep intimacy with him, but because he wants us to flow in what he has for us. Signs, wonders, and miracles, that's for all of us. That's for all of us to minister, but also to recognize that the Bible says in, in Ephesians 6 that we're not warring against flesh and blood, but against principalities and powers and rulers of darkness and wickedness in high places. Listen, we're dealing with the spirit realm. Now, again, you know, I say this often. He's not my focus, but when, I'm, when he is in the midst of it, I'm going to deal with it. We can't just pretend it's not there and just, oh, that's all craziness. You know, they're always focused on warring and the devil. Come on. It's a reality. And so, no, do I want to always focus on it? I don't. But, again, like I said, when it's manifesting, I know what to do with it. I'm not going to run away and not address it or pretend it's not there and then have all hell break loose in my home and my life. What are we going to do about it? If he says he's given us victory and authority over it, then we have to learn to operate in it. So Malachi 4, 5, and 6 says, Behold, I'm going to send you Elisha the prophet before the coming of the great terrible day of the Lord. This is what's happening. The Lord is releasing a spirit of Elisha in their lives, in the churches. And we decree that in a government, in our nation. And it says, he will turn the hearts of the father to their children and the hearts of the children to their fathers, a, recon a reconciliation produced by repentance so that I will not come and strike the land with the curse of destruction. So this spirit is joining the next gener generation, the spirit of Elisha, to turn one to another to the back to the Lord. All right? And so it wants to bring restoration where this spirit has brought, well, oh, my God, with this this vaccination and church is not open and, and, and division. Who won't can't see one person or who can't come out because of, are you kidding me? We need to be with each other and has caused division amongst families. That is a spirit, period. And so this thing, God is saying there's a spirit of Elisha, the, the mantle, that Elisha anointing that, that we all have that's in us. To bring healing and restoration and reconciliation. To overthrow that spirit that wants us to be without cohabitation, without intimacy, without oneness, without unity, without being one with another. And not understanding that God came to set us free and to recognize that there are, there are strategies that the enemy has, but God always has a plan for us. He, the Bible says in Isaiah, he goes before us and he's our rear guard. Right? So, so how do we get rid of this thing? How do we get rid of this spirit? So we repent. Hello? We can just repent. You, if you online, if you're operating in that or you have a measure of it, repent. That, you know, that's the beauty of Jesus. And so, you know, you surrender your heart. You, you compromise. I was talking earlier today in the Bible study that, that we need to be all in and surrender. The Bible says if you lose your life for him, we'll gain our life. And I told him I hated that scripture because I'm like, what are you talking about? I didn't understand, you know, we have to give up everything. And I thought, oh, Lord, you know, what are we going to not have fun or not have a life? But no, you have abundant life, abundant living, right? Before the lie is you need drugs, you need to get high, you need to party, you need to do this, or you have to shop all day, or you have to, you know, you know look at porn, or you're, you're going to uh, whatever, whatever it is that, that floated your boat, whatever it was. But the Lord is saying to us, no, the thief comes to steal, kill, and destroy. He says, but I have come to give you that life more abundantly. That's when you surrender. Lord, I surrender all. Lord, I give up my rights because I yield and I surrender to you. I'm telling you, you will have the greatest victory ever because I've tried it both ways, trust me. This way is better. Total surrender is much better. Lord, I surrender to you. Not my right. I give up my rights to you, Lord, because he knows better. If he's our designer, he created us. Don't you think he knows what's best for us? So... That's really important that we do that. And, and we can't recover our authority and walk in true authority if we don't understand um, that we have to repent. All right? And so we have to renounce the spirit, come out of agreement with it, take back your faith. Oh, I did tell him. Okay. And, and uh, you know, take your responsibility. What does the Bible say? When I come back to earth, will I find faith? 
Come on, where are, we in, where are we at with our faith? When I come back, he says, will I find faith on the earth? The Bible says in Hebrews, it's impossible to please him without faith. So if you're struggling in that area, build yourself up. Don't, it's not, I'm not condemning you. Build yourself up. Listen, I'm always going over where I need help. I don't have it all in my faith. I'm work, I always work on it. I get before the Lord. I meditate on the scriptures. I step out in faith in that because I want to build myself up in him. All right? So, and then resist the devil. The Bible says resist the devil, what? And he will flee, right? So, everybody okay? Yeah. Okay. So, we can stand. I got to take a sip of water. We're going to pray. I just want to encourage you to, to um, do some searching in, in your family history because many times there's spiritual activity, not necessarily Jezebel, but it, there, you know, there could be things that were accepted in your family line that were tainted by spiritualism and you just didn't know it, right? Like we were in China and um, we, we picked up on a lot of stuff that was going on over there and in that case, we realized it wasn't a Christian country, right? And and you can forget, you can take take for granted the blessings in America, that it is a Christian country and that it's built right into our our uh, our laws, and and the people were rude to each other and all. And and this is a different angle I'm giving you now. Like Trisha's mom came from Italy, and there was a lot of spiritual stuff that was going on over there that she didn't recognize wasn't lining up with scripture and all i'm asking you to do now is just look back maybe you have to repent for your family too for their ignorance and just for not knowing it often the motive is good the, the parents think they're protecting their children by making agreements with spirits you know look whatever way the devil twists it we're not blaming anybody right you believe that they did the best they could with what they had but you don't want to be victim of that curse coming down that family line. I'll leave it at that because Trisha's really the expert on that one. Not really. We're all still learning. But yeah, so a lot of our families were involved in witchcraft, right? So there's Santeria, there's the Italian witchcraft, there's Macumba, there's, there's all these different things that everybody got involved in, right? That were contrary to Jesus. And let me tell you something, Freemasonry is another big thing that, that we're going to talk about. Not tonight. But, but there's, there's a lot of things that our family line that's opened up to. And you say, well, what does that have to do with me? I didn't do it. But, but it can come down the line. That's what the scripture says. So we pray. That's all. You know, and I don't know if people make a big deal out of it. Just pray, for heaven's sakes. So we renounce it. We come out of agreement with it. And we, 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 we break the power of that, that spirit that's been over our family line. And we pray. And then... We, there's learned behavior we have, right? So it's not just that it's a spirit. We also have a behavioral issue that we have to shift, right? And that's where meditating on the word comes in, and that's very really important. So, you know, before I pray, I just want to remind you, next weekend we have the deliverance conference with Norma and Pasquale Arabazo, and I, I'll tell you, they are powerful. They have a powerful testimony. And then also with Becca Greenwood, so we will not have service next Wednesday night because we're going to have it Friday and Saturday, okay? All right, so we're going to pray. And I'm going to pray, and I guess you can just listen, and, and we're going to pray that the Lord releases over us a, um, a, a warring spirit, a spirit of Jehu, all right? And uh, because Jehu took that spirit out, and that's what we're going to pray tonight, okay? So Father God, in the name of Jesus, I come before you. I thank you for victory. I thank you, Lord God, that, that we are your beloved and that you love us with an everlasting love, oh God. And I thank you, Lord God, that the enemy is defeated, he is dethroned, he is disarmed, and he's destroyed. And today, Lord, as believers, as victorious believers, oh God, and, a and, and children of the Lord, Lord, we have the power and authority over any spirit, and we take authority over it. And Father, we repent if any area of our lives where we have aligned with rebellion, witchcraft, seduction, deception, or any kind of lies, Father, we repent. We just ask you to cleanse us, Lord. 
Lord, we take authority over any demonic spirit and we cast it down. We say you have no right. And we decree a cleansing over us, oh God, in, our, in Jesus' name. And right now, Lord, we thank you in that you've given us an opportunity that we can come boldly before your throne room of grace and we can repent, oh God. And Lord, again, we repent if we have tolerated Jezebel, if we've been intimidated by that spirit, if we have backed down. Father, we repent. And Lord, I just ask for forgiveness. And Lord, any, if, if I've operated in that, if I've caused people any kind of pain, or trauma, Father, I repent. And I remove any entry point, any open doors where I have allowed the spirit to come in or any spirits of sin and rebellion or um, disappointment, uh, fear, any, any, any open door, Lord, I repent. And again, I ask you to cleanse. I ask you to cleanse me, Lord. And I take responsibility for my actions and I renounce all control, intimidation, manipulation from any demonic spirit. Now, Lord, I surrender my will to you. I repent of my sins. I break every spell, every curse from Jezebel right now. I recognize that I've been bewitched and I repent before you. I surrender all insecurities. I take responsibility for mistreating people and cursing people. And Lord, I submit to your authority. And again, I repent for tolerating Jezebel. And I ask you to empower me with the anointing like Jehu to displace this spirit and any other spirit in Jesus' name. And I thank you for freedom and breakthrough. I renounce this destructive spirit. And in Jesus' name, I command every spirit of Jezebel that come out of me or my family line. I break every agreement, every control, every soul tie be broken. I command it to be broken in Jesus' name. Now, Lord, I thank you for the power of your blood. And Lord, I decree and declare, now you can say this, I decree and declare that I have a warrior anointing within me. And just like Jehu took out Jezebel, I thank you for that anointing that you've given me to take Je Jezebel out and any other spirit that has tried to hold me back. And I declare today, I have the spirit of the living God within me that over, will overthrow any demonic force that has tried to take me out in Jesus' name. Now I'm hearing the Lord tell me that there have been some, it could be online and maybe here, that you have been so distraught at times and disappointed and even disillusioned with him and, and that you has had you've actually thought maybe you're better off dead than alive. So now I just speak to that suicidal spirit of fantasy, that suicidal spirit of death that would like to cut your life short. And I bind that spirit and render it powerless and ineffective in Jesus' name. Lord, where there's been hopelessness and despair, there may be some that you may, you're, you could be here that you're withdrawing because you're just battle fatigued and you're tired. Lord, I bind that spirit. I bind the effects of that, that weariness. Now, I, I, this spirit of witchcraft has caused discouragement, defeat, depression. I take authority over it right now. And Lord, I just release your presence, your power, the breaker anointing your wind right now. Father, I just pray healing and deliverance right now in Jesus' name. And I thank you, Holy Spirit, for freedom. You came to set the captives free, Lord. And Lord, I just pray right now where this enemy is just trying to infiltrate our minds, trying to infiltrate our families. We say no to you right now. We say back off and we apply the blood of Jesus and we say no. And we just thank you for a turnaround. We thank you for a turnaround in Jesus' name. We thank you for a double portion anointing. We thank you for a shift in our lives. Lord, you said, command ye me. You said we are to decree the word and it shall be established unto us. Lord, your word even said, and even those that are innocent that we're praying for will come to the Lord. So, Lord, we just decree 
your authority. We thank you that we're your children. You said in your word to resist the enemy and he will flee. But at first we have to submit unto the Lord. And we thank you, Father, that the enemy is defeated because he goes around as a roaring lion. Not that he is one. As a roaring lion seeking whom he may devour. So, Lord, I decree restoration. And, and we're the enemy. And I tell you right now, he has tried to take out families and, your, and prodigals and, and just bring division. And the Lord says that this is the season. This has always been a season, but we're going to see reconciliation and restoration in families. And so, Lord, again, we bind the effects. We say you will not have our families. Lord, you said in your word that you will contend with those who contend with our, our family, our children, and you will rescue them. We speak to siblings. We speak to, to family members. Lord, your word says you don't want that any should perish. So, Lord, we just thank you, Father, that we are a covenant, in covenant with you, and you're a covenant with God. And you're a covenant, God. And your word says in Psalms 89 that with your covenant, you will not alter. So that means there's healing, there's deliverance, there's safety, there's preservation. Don't give up, the Lord's saying. Don't give up. Don't back down. Don't give up. Lord, we just release your passion over each and every one. Father, where the fire's gone out, Lord, we decree tonight you will be a bonfire for Jesus Christ. So, Lord, we say fan the flame, fan the flame, fan the flame of your presence. Let the wind of your presence just overtake all of us, Lord. Let us be a bonfire for you, O oh God. Lord, let us burn for you. And let the light of your burning fire over us draw many unto us, that they will cry out to the living God. We will not give in to that spirit that wants us to be carnal and to live passionless. God, we say no to that. <laughs> we release the passion, the passion of Jesus Christ. The zeal of the Lord, I decree, has consumed you in Jesus' name. Amen and amen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I just also want to pray for uh, marriages, okay? Uh, Jezebel had a weak husband. We're going to come against that spirit. And there was something in her that caused Elijah to flee. Right? Trisha addressed that, the discouragement. But there's something about that Jezebel spirit of rebellion that doesn't want to, to, to submit to the authority. And, you know, this is not a domination relationship, a husband and wife. A wife is not less than a husband. We're, we need each other. We become one. So, Lord, we repent of weak men in our culture. We repent of absent men who have abandoned their responsibility in any way that the, the woman has had to take on more of a responsibility than she needed to. And that we ask you, Lord, to cause that courage to rise up in the men, to take the, the, the proper place. And that as the church of Jesus Christ, we would mentor men to take the responsibility that's been neglected for too long. But we say thus far and no more that the men will take a stand and that the marriages will be understood that it, not what the culture says a marriage is, that it's not just a convenient sexual relationship. It's a covenant lifelong relationship. Lord, we take a stand for that tonight and we break the hold of that weak man spirit and that dominating spirit of Jezebel. And we say proper alignment, the crooked way be made straight tonight in Jesus name. Amen.